and uh, we're going to be scrutinized out in the community, out in the community because of a video camera. Um, uh, and then we're going to be very official up here. If the council sees fit to, to video our own movies, or movies, our own meetings, and put them out to the community, we can also do that. But anything that's said, everything that's said, has to be on that um, on that video. So much for that. So at this point, we're going to establish the rules. That all speakers that come to the mic will speak three minutes, three minutes only. And there will be no disrespect to the council. There will be no dis disrespect from the councils of the community. And that's, and that's, and the, and the violations will be dealt with in that respect. So I entertain a motion to, can I get a motion to accept the rules? Motion to accept those rules. There's a second. Second. All in favor? All right. The opposed motion carried. Thank you very much. Mayor, could I uh, check with the solicitor on the rules and regulations and maybe rights of being photographed and added sent to these other I mean there's so many things you can do with videos, tapes, sure. cut, I mean, these are tapes. these are public public meetings, they're public uh, anybody has a right to photograph, uh, videotape these meetings so long as they're not uh, going to intrude upon the meetings or interfere is actually where the word they're not going to interfere with the progress uh, the process of the meetings. Uh, uh, those individuals have the right to do with what they please with regards to those videos. Uh, Alter, with regards they, to, they can be altered also? Sure, sure. Okay. These are public, this is a public venue. Uh, what the mayor is indicating, however, is that uh, in years past, we've kept a strict uh, three minute time limit during public session. Um, that time limit was put into place in order to make for a more orderly meeting uh, and to allow for uh, the meeting to. Uh, uh, conclude at some time in a, in a reasonable future. Uh, it's often, um, the public session is often the longest part of the meeting, uh, and I think the mayor's been noting that uh, the public session as of late has been extending uh, for a, uh, a, a an ordinary period of time, uh, and there's been a lot of comment, and uh, in order to allow for everybody the opportunity to speak and to allow for the meetings to move in a more orderly fashion, we're going to reinstitute the three minutes per uh, 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 person, three minutes per person uh, rule, uh, so that we can uh, we can have these meetings concluded and move move through uh, in, a, in a better fashion. Does that answer the question? Mayor, can I ask something? Can I also sure. ask that we enforce the rule of turning cell phones off in the meetings? Mm -hmm. We got somebody in meetings with their cell phones going off. Mm -hmm. It's my strategy. That's my kids. <laughs> Okay. I have a couple of things to report. Uh, to report. Um, the triad will be here tomorrow morning. That's our grants people will talk about uh, small cities grants for the coming year, probably 2016. Um, on Friday at 3 o'clock, we'll be meeting with the county and the conversations are going to be about outsourcing, <laughs> about uh, shared services with the dispatchers. So that's, that's going to be a meeting on Friday the 10th. Um, if you went down Penn Street, you'll see the house, the four, six, and eight is down, and the house in the center of Penn Street, I understand, is down as well. So the Penn Street properties are both torn down. Those abandoned houses, dilapidated houses are both torn down. It's been a long time coming. It's been a long time. Uh, and the next place we're going to be stopping, our next stop is going to be at the corner of Pitton Street and Landing Avenue. That's our next stop to uh, get that property torn down. And then I'm looking to go across town and get a couple over there. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, it was brought to my attention. <laughs> The, the, by the by the by the by the group that's that, that they say, help you helping the mayor you tell me about the navigator properties and abandoned properties so we found out those numbers are way up there there's there's lots and lots of abandoned properties in, ta in town you wouldn't even know they were abandoned so we did a we did a strict search on all the abandoned properties in Pennsylvania. we had a meeting yesterday 
we're going to be talking about it in the August meeting and making the decisions. And so what we're going to do about these abandoned properties. Um, and the, one of the rules that everybody has to understand is that if, if your house is vacant for six months, then plus if there's some tax issues there as well, then we have a right to go in and institute this new abandoned law. Am I saying that right? Pretty much, yeah. Well, let's elaborate just a little bit on that. Sure. Uh, uh, under the abandoned property law, we, we've enacted an ordinance pursuant to that law uh, that uh, indicates that uh, if the property is uh, is in fact abandoned and nobody's living in it, uh, and either it, uh, taxes are owed uh, or the property is in deplorable condition or it's a health and safety risk uh, or uh, any one of a number of other items, uh, it can be placed onto what's known as an abandoned property list. Uh, that list then gets published in the newspaper and the owners and lien holders get uh, notice that their property is put on that list. Uh, when the property is put on that list, the um, uh, assuming the, what, what can happen is the property owner can come and object. Uh, and if they object, generally what ends up happening is they would have to come into uh, enter into an agreement with the borough uh, to rehab and fix up the properties uh, or um, nothing happens in which case the borough has the right to uh, do what they call uh, spot blight condemnation. It's sort of a, it's an eminent domain proceeding where the borough could uh, take over ownership of that property um, that's on the abandoned property list. So uh, we're at the very beginning stages of this process but uh, we're hopeful that uh, uh, just by placing that several property owners, just by having their properties placed on that list, will come forward and start doing what they need to do uh, with regard to those properties and doing the right thing uh, as far as uh, getting those properties rehabbed and fixed up so that they're not uh, falling apart. And Rick, I think what we've seen um, yesterday when we looked at all those properties is. Um, Close to 200 properties. What we seen yesterday was the fact that, and you heard discussion about not tearing properties down but rehabbing. I see the majority of the properties uh, they come back and our controls can, and well, they can be rehabbed. And that's going to be our decision. Is you have to rehab the property if you get it at a, at a cheaper rate. You have to rehab it. And uh, of course, we're still going homeowner occupied houses. I do take your place. <laughs> I've been listening to this organization. Um, so that's got to be our position. That's so many, so many, so many. It's, it's, it's just something that, uh, that we, we see that people just walk away. Can't take it anymore. And that's sad uh, when people walk away with houses to live in years and can't pay for it. Uh, we are working on a tax increase for this year, and we haven't got all our figures back, but we had some good numbers so far we're dealing with. So hopefully we'll keep this tax rate uh, uh, down to a, low, to a low number, very, very low number. I'd like to shoot for zero, but I'm only going to let us go to zero. But uh, we are working on that as well, trying to make sure that the taxpayer does not get hurt. Um, we hear a contract talks with Carney's Point on, on the uh, Public Works Shared Services Agreement. Um, there are some issues that's happening um, with those talks and what we need to do. One of the issues that we're dealing with is uh, uh, cutting barrel lots. So in the meantime, while these, these contract talks are going on, we need to, uh, I need to entertain a motion that, uh, that we used uh, the River Church and they agreed to help us uh, keep these lots cut. But right now, there's we got a bunch of lots. It's the how the grades are so high, it's just it's disgraceful. But uh, and the driver and Luke crazy over there. But the issue is, and people have people going to court about getting these, uh, cut these lots, and and the court system will take a while. So so we, in the meantime, had to do some things like cutting people's grass for them and putting the leaves against their property. That's right. Because some of them are, I mean, I mean, I mean high. And you ride around town, you'll see some lots that have not been cut forever because in some of those cases, the property owner has abandoned the property or, or 
we have them in court. We got people filing bankruptcy on us and everything else. Uh, so we were working with this these locks, so uh, trying to keep them cut the best we can. But in the meantime, we, we need uh, the riveters to cut those borough owned properties and their state contracted so they can they can they can legally do it. Um, until we get through these uh, talks with Carnage Point Sheriff Service, so I didn't say motion to allow that. If I can get a motion to allow. Motion, motion to allow. That's the River Church cutting lots for us. Yes. <laughs> Is second. there a second? Second. All in favor? Any no. opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. <coughs> that's, all the, that's all the the new news. Um, did I get everybody so far? Any, uh, any, any uh, departmental reports or communication? None? Okay. Um, we have, uh, if, before we go into resolution, we have contract requests and applications. We do have some of those. Um, we have an uh, application for Farmers Association, Pamela Holmes, uh, take the down. <coughs> All the paperwork's in order, so I've entered a motion to allow Pamela to be a member of the Fence Group Fire Department. So is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. opposed, wish we carry. Thank you very much. We have a Fence Group Ambulance application for Dalton Treese. Uh, Fensville resident joining us. I a motion to accept this application. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. That's the contracts agreed. We also have um, the resolutions. Okay. We got resolution number 2015-7-68. Resolution authorizing the final payment. Uh, that's the Mill Street payment. I said, we got the resolution. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Aye. The opposed motion carried. Thank you very much. Resolution number 2015-7-69. Emergency temporary. Is that, the, is that the budget? Budget. Budget. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution? Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Another resolution 2015-70-70. Authorizing the mailing of tax sale notices in accordance with the statute. A motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. We have another resolution 2015-70-67. The, I'm sorry, we did that much. We have a session. We have another one here, though. Did I do that one? No, seven. That's 71, right? That's when this came, this came today. No, did you, are the audience have that one? Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's see. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, resolution authorizing change order number three from Mill Street and Delaware Avenue pump station. Please. Okay. And a motion to adopt the resolution. Motion to adopt. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Sign this one. Sign one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The resolution. We have the old or new business. The old or new business. Motion to pay the bills. Motion to pay the bills. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion to carry. Thank you very much. Okay. We call up the date. Okay. Now we have a motion to open this meeting for the public. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion to carry. Thank you very much. Uh, we now to the public. For those who wish to address Mary Council, come to the mic and give us the name and address and take your business with us.
Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Ryan McNevin. I live on Naylor Avenue. Okay. Um, I found something the other day uh, in town here that could be addressed, and it's a safety issue, and it could be done really cheaply if somebody would give me a piece of plywood. The old bar down here, Renner's Bar, the door is open. There's a window there. You can reach in. There's two doors. You know, you just put a sheet, you know, sheet of plywood. It, it, it takes maybe 15 minutes. I mean, maybe somebody's got one laying around the garage. We wouldn't even have to spend any of the grower's money. You know, I'll even go down there and nail it. Yeah. Uh, second, I have a second question about so the. We'll uh, take care of that for you, Kevin. We'll, we'll handle that. Okay. That's, right. in the, that's in the back, Kevin, or is that in the front? Brian, it's Brian. Brian. Yeah, it's in the front. Brian. Never, sorry. Okay. We'll, we'll handle that. And thank um, you very much. Secondly, um, are we getting anywhere with the? Uh, Lights on the river walk, getting them fixed. Uh, I can give you a, just a brief, get the community a brief. We had a meeting with the new owner the other day, and a company called Sass Mooney. Uh, they uh, they are the owners of the riverfront, the new owners. They also own the Poland building. They also own the old bank building right across the street. And they're looking at uh, doing something down there, and they're supposed to come back to us with a plan. So we gave us some temporary plans, off the record stuff, but uh, they're going to come back to us with a plan, but they're looking at uh, some things down on the river. The one thing they talk about is like amphitheater, entertainment kind of stuff down there, but uh, we haven't seen uh, anything written yet. And, uh, but when they were here the other day, and they did meet with us, so, and they're look, for looking at some kind of, some construction, but uh, that's not the public yet at this point. But uh, we'll keep it, we'll definitely keep it in front. Uh, the other thing, um, have we collected any money from these uh, from this new state law with these banks and these mortgage companies allowing us to fine them for the uh, uh, for having them abandoned and you know overgrown and you know just yeah, screwed up? We haven't collected anything yet. We're putting a plan together. We, we had a meeting yesterday and we went to uh, actually over 200 abandoned properties or. That you would never be there abandoned, but the way we calculate a lot of that was the fact that uh, if your your place is empty for six months, that means it's considered abandoned. In some cases, where some people owe taxes, so that's, that's another strike against them on the property. Plus, have been abandoned for six months, and then just some folks have walked away, and you see the property is just dilapidated, and just you know, and those type of things. And we are. We met yesterday, and I was essentially putting the plan together. Uh, and you can explain to me what we're going to do when you come back in August. Mm -hmm. You can explain to the Brian. You can explain to me what we're going to do again. Oh, oh um, I think we just discussed that with regard to the abandoned properties yeah. and the process as far as uh, getting the list put together and uh, going out to uh, notify the property owners. And, it was essentially what I just ran down uh, earlier in the meeting. Yeah, some of these properties are owned own by banks as well. I think I think we talked about the prior question more related to the bank ownership of these properties. And, and the, I think some of our, I did see some bank names. Some of them are bank owned. Yeah, I could offer everybody here one compliment uh, about the video taping. I think it's a good idea. I don't. I can't edit. I don't know how to edit. I think it's a great idea. idea. Yeah, but yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's a good idea because it, it, it keeps everybody honest. The other thing is, too, we had a situation with this storm, mm -hmm. and right around in this neighborhood, there was lines down, there was trees down. So the police were out there within a matter of minutes putting cones in the road. I think they did a wonderful job with the challenge they had to do, right? And I think we need to just, just you know, give them a round of applause. About it. I related to the chief. I think one was near your house. <laughs> They, they, they were. They did a good job. So I'm really, I'm really up to the chief. Are, are we? Get, can we do anything about these kids with these not riding around with bicycle helmets? I mean, there's a state law. Is that? There's a town law as well. Yeah. Oh, sir. Who's that back there? And for the glass so I can see. Oh, uh, oh that's a bright man. Yeah, we do enforce it. We'll do. We um, we'll write a ticket to the parent, and then uh, what our judge has been doing is. 
come to court for showing a helmet, yeah. the judge will dismiss it. So it actually works out pretty good. The parent doesn't really get the thing for a fine or anything like that. It works out. I think it's thing on the line where they can get the helmets four dollars. I don't know how good they are, but I'm not sure they don't need the code. We're aware of it. We do write the ticket from time to time to the parent. People have asked me to ask you too about the oil tank at the Penn Street site and the quality of air, the asbestos monitoring. These are technical questions, but the thing is, and I'm not a, a technical We're person. We're going to need more time, by the way. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll shut up. It's no, but that, that's a good question. No, 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 that's good. Great question. The Thank question you. about the tank at the uh, Penn Street site. Uh, I'll refer it over to Lou because he's going to work with the contractors. It's, it's been cut in half, it's cleaned, and it was inspected and approved by the state inspector, William. So and now it just has to be discarded to a, a uh, spread place. I mean, can, it, can any person that picks up metal, can you pick, pick that up? Or we have no, special. within the code it says that the money has to be set aside for the owner. We'll take that up to the next. I guess his question is, what are we going to do with the tank? That's going to be discarded to scrap that Okay, and um, what was the other part? Is, is, it, is it, do we have to take oil samples on that? Right. Like, that was all done. Yeah. That was all done. And, and uh, there's, a, uh, there's a permit required, and uh, then there was an inspection, and it was approved. Part of the inspection was soil samples, and the state did that. And so I'm, sure we, uh, I'm sure we did it with the uh, asbestos too. Yeah, that was yeah. that was dealt with by law. We had to do that. Yeah. yeah. Even though also the house in the center pantry with more asbestos issues than the one of yeah. six and eight. Correct. Right. And that was that was addressed properly. So that was all done by law. So thank you for your questions. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. Oh, that house right down the street from there on Penn Street, the one that, that has the dumpster in front of it now, that dumpster's been sitting there for about a week. That's, that's because there's asbestos, that, that dumpster is for asbestos. Um, I know it is. And it has to stay there in case they find <coughs> some pipe lagging that has asbestos. So it does it have to stay there for? It's not that's not for. It's a third of the way full of bags, and, and it's covered in the no, it's, set by sitting there. Maybe it was long. empty. If you look at it now, it might be um, 10 to 15 cents. You may have seen it at another. That's not me. I think last night it was still, uh, it was a good chunk sitting in there. Uh, yeah. It's, it's yeah. a good point. I know you guys are handling it, but I was concerned that it was sitting there for a prolonged period. I'm wondering if it has to sit there for it, you know, too much it's longer. It's necessary until the building's completely clean. You need a place to put the asbestos and to find any lagging and pipes. Years ago, that's what they did. They didn't saw any heating pipes. They put asbestos jackets on them to keep the pipes from freezing. And uh, there, there isn't any problem that I can see. And I was an asbestos supervisor for New York City for many years. Yeah, no, I was just concerned with the amount of time that we were sitting there. The more time, the more risk. No. The more the risk increases. But we can. No, the, the bags are sealed before they're sealed and vacuumed, and they can't burst in case they're ruptured. There's no air in the bags. It's all done properly. Fire, no doubt. Uh, last week we talked about uh, the public bidding process and how some of the advantages that we would have there and I was wondering if perhaps any of that was included into some of the, the bidding that has been done in the previous month. Um, has any of the work that you just mentioned went out for public bid, such as, I hate to sound like I'm dead, taking on past hire, but such as the mowing and, and uh, the roof out here, has any of that went out for public bid yet? Have you been able to put any of those stipulations in the process? The issue with the, the lots we talked about, we have an emergency situation, but that's going out to bid. Mm. That's going out to bid. But we hope to be awarding a bid for somebody to cut these lawns or properties in the August meeting. 
Right, and then the, uh, these properties that are bank owned and the ones that are, like we were talking about earlier, real high and they, we can't wait for the owner. Uh, I assume they get back charged for that and uh, put into a judgment, et cetera, for those costs. Yes, you have to retain. Um, now, is that considered prevailing wage under the state prevailing wage law? I don't know that long cutting falls in the prevailing wage issue, but that keeps coming up. It may. I think it, it, it may. Um, I, I think I See what your problem is. The water was a little high, but it didn't. It didn't. It didn't go crazy. It was just a lot of water in a short period of time. That's what happened to our sandy up around. Right. The that's what was that. crucified us. Right. Uh, and I was just wondering how the pumps handled it. How the, I mean, we have new pumps that are repaired. I mean, did they keep up? Did they get jammed up? There was an issue somebody had mentioned last week that we didn't have any type of sleaze gate around to stop it from getting jammed. Was that an issue this time? It's an issue with the. Of course, there's an issue with the prisons in the area because. If you right down to the strongest main pump right now, our problem is we have parties pointing to our, our shared service folks that do that. Um, those ditches should be cleaned. I'll, what I'll see is a lot of buildup in grass and that would have been what's happening to us. As people do stuff we're not supposed to throw a lot of times, it ends up in that ditch. And then and, um, and it's clogging up the. Um, I guess a screen down there, dude, they call them screens or whatever you call Yeah, I think it's yeah, yeah. whatever it is. I That's an issue we're, we're wrestling with at this point. Uh, oh, what about a, a chain link fence around it? I mean, that's no more than, what, four or five feet deep and it's, and it's deep, as far as I understand? I mean, is it clogging? Did we have an issue in this last? I, I didn't hear any, any uh, clogging issues, but they're still there. Mm. It's there until we do something to correct that whole issue. Has anybody proposed, uh, has anybody proposed a, a, some type of method to, to make that repair, to make that? Yeah, our, our, well, Carney's point looked into it. I think mean, Gene Gilbert's looked into that as far as we go. Yeah, how, 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 we, how, how, we, how he corrects that. But Gene yeah. Gilbert's been working on that for some time, trying to figure, figure that out. That is not a... Um, now, I've been spending a lot of time looking for private investors, uh, people who want to come in and perhaps buy some of these tax or tax uh, borough owned properties. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been looking within the town here. Um, and I, I kind of got a curveball that there were people willing to invest in the town that were here. Mm -hmm. um, and I found other ways to leverage it, uh, some other things. But I, I don't know how accurate the information is or how to double check it. But from what I understand, the state has a lien against some of our borough owned properties. And mm -hmm. how would that lien affect it if somebody wanted to buy those properties from the borough? Is it going to artificially inflate the price of those properties? No, it wouldn't affect the price of the properties. The, what we did deal with the liens on the properties when we had to redevelop the agency. Uh, the state wanted some collateral. They gave us a, a redevelopment loan, but they ended up taking the money back. But uh, the state wanted collateral. So all our properties had to go as you might put something up to buy something. You put your house over to buy it's collateral or something right. like yeah. that. Yeah, so we had to go through that all those properties. We're in the process now of getting those properties all back to us. So we're working with the state now to get those properties released back to us so we can get rid of them. So if if we can't find the money, is the borough able to negotiate something with a, a large scale purchase, a, a bulk purchase of multiple properties? If you got the money, I'll sell every day as one of them. Well, we're not talking about paying retail for them, but perhaps, I mean, that's what I'm asking. Is this lien that's against them? Is it, is it a lien for the retail value of the house? Because when you see it's, it's a blanket, it's a blanket lien. On, on all redevelopment owned properties, yeah. uh, it's not a specific amount for each property. There's a, it's a lien. I, I don't remember what the amount is, but let's say a million dollars, and it's it's collateralized by a longer list of 
has remote properties. Now, if somebody wants to come in and buy one of those properties, then the mortgage that's clouding the title line yeah. dealt with, uh, the state may be willing to work with us to release the mortgage uh, on that. But in the meantime, we're looking to uh, essentially refinance that loan uh, in such a way that it would remove the mortgage on all those properties. And that loan is attached to the river, the first riverfront deal, from what I understand? I don't know. No, I don't think it has anything to do with the riverfront deal. That, um, that redevelopment loan, you guys didn't do anything. No. That was like, we used about 500000 of that money, uh, but it had nothing to do with the riverfront deal. Uh, you said that we, you guys over the last few weeks have compiled a list of which of these houses are bank owned, which are federal owned. Is that list public? No. Well, I mean, it's, I don't have a list. Uh, we went through, uh, I went. I met with my construction code official and, and he explained it to me, but I don't have a list like physically put together. Do you maintain a list like that of which of these houses are Work, work on that. I'm going to wait around three minutes. Yeah. Wait around three minutes. I can stop. Great questions. Great questions. Would you extend me a few more minutes to, to chase this rabbit down the hall? Sure. You're, you're, we have to just got a lot of good questions. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Hall, you I'll move off of that. I last, the last thing you guys said, I mean, it seemed like every day this month that I work with either on Monday or Wednesday, but I'll follow up with this line question with you personally, if that's okay. Um, the police. There's been some issues with, uh, along Main Street with some loitering and, and kids hanging out and adults at stores that are harassing people and whatnot. And it came up, someone had suggested that perhaps it would be a good idea to use a foot patrol or bike patrol. Uh, and during that conversation, we actually, uh, got an opinion from Mr. Sparrow, one of the officers who were uh, actually on patrol just last night, he told us what he actually did last night. And in, in a one mile town, he uh, he patrolled 128 miles. There were 33 investigations, uh, a couple domestic, just the list of what they did just last night was amazing with two people. So it kind of makes it, you know, yes, maybe um, a foot patrol through some of these areas could prevent some of these problems that we're having, but I don't know if it's even possible with the limited manpower that Hensburg police already have, how they would actually do it. And I'm wondering if uh, it's possible that there's some type of agreement with Carney's Point to use some of their people because we need presence on Main Street. Would you that, uh, I think you know, Officer Sparrow touched on it last night. He told you that we had a lot of complaints. It's summertime, we're really busy right now, and I see. Uh, we had a class two. We, we just lost a class two. He went and went for other employment, and he was used for foot patrol. That was something the chief implements. We do. We'll park the car down the, near where Crown Chicken used to be. You know, something else, I believe. We we'll park just the car. Just, we can have him walk around, but sometimes we're chasing complaints. I'm supposed to be up here 20 minutes ago. And, Still out here chasing complaints. Yes. Uh, like I said, the list of what they actually accomplished last night was mind boggling. It blew me away. But, you know, with what's going out on Main Street in nice weather in the summertime, you know, maybe there's someone in, in Carney's Point that could exchange they got their the same, hours. They have the same problem we do. We're backing them up, they're backing us up. It's almost 50 50. They're, they're working tonight with two guys. We're working with two guys. It's not. Yes, yeah, not going to happen. Um, so you, You've been going 12 minutes of please conclude. No, questions. Right. First, right. first questions are great questions. Now, uh, I'll bend the rules like you, Brian and yourself, being some great right. outstanding questions. I think everybody learns a lot. When, but uh, okay. not that I'm. I, I understand. I understand. I'm going to appreciate your questions. If there's a minute or two left at the end, I might. Anyone else want to jump in there? Come on up. Oh, well, how are you doing? How are you doing? I was expecting you. I know you were. <laughs> Excuse my appearance. My name is Donna Medford. I live at 19 Denny Avenue. I came to complain about the property around me. And you're aware of it. How about citations or anything? This has been, I tried to complain early so that it wouldn't grow over into my property. This is behind my house. That's behind. I was, I was, I was confused. Because the, the trees are up and over my, on my property, which I can understand is mm -hmm. a zoning thing where I have to worry about that. But underneath the um, weeds and stuff is debris. It's a, like a shed that fell down. Oh, boy. There's possum back here. There's raccoons. 
rest. Anything you want is back here. It's coming on my property. And then um, the second thing is my street. We have two big potholes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I need to go to Carney's Point and complain. No, you're, you're directly. Yeah. And I don't think anything's been done to my street in 20 years. No, that's the last time my cousin and I. I remember, I think we did it almost done back then. Yeah, that that's what you did, exactly. Mm -hmm. So there's been two big potholes. And then um, in front of my house, um, there's property and the weeds are like up to my waist across the street. That's, I think you're dealing with that. Because I got yeah. a whole lot of complaints on that lot. I mean, you know, you know, you know, you want to invite people over, but you know, look at the environment. Thank God John Scarpay did a good job. Building that house. Building that house and renovating, and then he tore the other one down. I guess he tore it down. I don't well, know. Miles tore it down. But anyway, it's down. It looks beautiful it's over good. there. <laughs> now, um, behind AutoZone, whose property is that? That's down the street from me. Behind AutoZone? Yeah, isn't, isn't that their property? There's a cove over there. Yeah, it's like right there where all the trees are and everything. Is that their I mean, you They're know. Their property? I thought it was because they put the trees out there. It's hard to say. We need to find out. Yeah. yeah. Depending on the cold, for the cold for all stuff. Yeah, because I like to walk my dog up and down the street, but I don't want to be walking in, you know, stuff like that. Who was the property crossing behind the big lot that got that high weeds that Scorpion's even complained about as well? But who owns that lot? That been recently sold to an outfit in New York. Well, you wouldn't get any cut that grass. And, uh, and they're, they're, I've notified them, and we have to wait and see if they respond. Uh, they were difficult to track down. Are they going to court, or are they just? Well, they have a 10-day notice from last week. And then from there, they're going to bring them And that's the whole court. field? That's the whole field and the house. Not the, the house. house. Was no, not the house. It's somebody not the house. The house belongs to someone else. No, that's one part. Is it one? Yeah. The house that was boarded up on Wilson last year. On Wilson Street, where we boarded right. ourselves? Right. And the lot. There's one owner now. Oh. Yeah. I know we had to, uh, And it used to be Richardson, I think. John yeah. Richardson, the John doesn't know that piece of the thing. We need to find where he owns it or not. No, he doesn't. Okay, so the firm you're talking about. Yeah, the firm has been notified. And let's see if they accept the mail or what they do. But uh, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be on the burger shortly in court. Okay. If, I not, mean, if not, we'll have to get it cut and we'll lean on it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because wild animals are coming out of there. The river church stopped maintaining the house properly. But not the whole field. They raised as high as you for the house. Yeah, right? I mean, it's. We were there, there a couple of weeks ago. Well, yeah, they were complaining church just the other day, so why didn't complain church? That's not good. They were, they were, they were notified over, so. But the, the house, the house I'm talking about, the, the weeds are high in there, the one we cut. Yeah. You know, you cut again. Um, now, now I'm concerned about the piece that Donna's talking about behind her house, because he'd be alley, he'd be alleys and everything running back through there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's it's be along the side, which I keep that cut down myself. He's been notified. He went there. He cut okay, it. can I let you know what he did? He cut it, but he didn't do that good. He job. pushed it back. He only pushed the weeds back enough to get off my fence. Now they're coming forward again. He didn't do that good of a job. No, he didn't. No. He will be drinking them in the he needs to clean that area up, not just cut. I mean, there's debris underneath. It's a shed that fell down. That's what's underneath it there. Oh, it's a mess. Absolutely. We need to advise him to do what he needs to do. If oh, not, he knows. if not, he goes to court. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And as being a property owner, that's why I'm here. Thank You're right. Me. Really? You're right. You know. Well, we all want Is that the only thing I got to complain about? The street, the field, behind my house. I mean, um, you know. Everybody, Everybody should be responsible for it. point was notified on those potholes maybe four months ago. Yeah, because they're big ones. I mean, one of them's so big that yeah. they can fit two two cinder blocks in it, a cone, somebody filled it in, and a big tree stump. He's right. He's going to do it directly to Mark before he's put up the puzzle. 19 Deming Avenue, D E M I N G. We'll get on it. Uh, I wasn't aware of it. Councilman, you didn't invite me. You're I'm sorry I came like this when I were today. Come as you are. You know I that. know. <laughs> I guess that's it. We'll be working on you. Okay, all right. But I want that person behind me to be accountable. 
What they is, may not live in this area, but I have to look at it. What, what, what it stays in court. Let me know if I can sit raising up behind them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Anyone else wish to address Mary Council? This is quality thirty-nine Delaware Drive, and sir, I had uh, two issues. One, uh, it's great to see the second house come down on Penn Street. It would be nice if, uh, in some way, uh, we could offer that property if the borough owns it to I don't know divide it in half to the two houses adjacent to it, and then they would have all street parking. Yeah. Instead of just having another empty lot that um, you know the borough's going to have to cut. Yeah. Uh, the right now, the house that would be real effective there. The yeah, house on either side, they just look for empty right now, but just we can make sure we look at that. Yeah, that's right. The one one yeah. house is empty. Uh, that would be one way, you know. Yeah. But that's that's a good point. Now the other problem with that property, we had to we would fight this property for. Several years. We would, we bought all these properties returned now for several years. The property you're talking about, I think that's still in bankruptcy. So I don't know how, how, how this whole thing's going to pan out yet. But we got to go after them for the demolition charges. Right. So I don't know how this whole thing's going to pan out yet with that property because they, they bought bankruptcy on us. And the worst part is they own properties all over the place. But they, got, they bought bankruptcy on us. And we've been fighting that one battle. Within the town, they own a lot of the properties? Yeah, they have several other ones. So they don't take care of those either. We're making the total problem a lot worse, right? Because uh, we're not responsible. Interesting. There's always something interesting. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the next problem we're going to stop by is corner of Pittman and uh, Main. Get that over there. So. I do commend the council that uh, we're starting to develop a, a real you know, program of uh, knocking down unsafe houses, boarding up good houses. And identifying houses that should be, you know, taken down because they're dilapidated beyond the point as always says after 50% they should be taken down. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, developing the fourth part of that program would be uh, give, giving uh, young families an incentive to want to, you know, buy some of these houses and fix them up so they, they get turned around. You have our way. It was abandoned home. We just located. A whole lot of young folks will have the opportunity. That would help get the borough council out of the housing. <laughs> we don't want to be in the housing minutes at all. Business, right? So, but, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I only have one other issue, with, and that was, uh, I mean, just coming up to Main Street, mm -hmm. East Main Street today, uh, the garbage on Main Street is like atrocious. And, uh, <laughs> I noticed another thing. I, it, I, I go up to that like that uh, liquor store, and there's always somebody standing out in the street talking to somebody in the car, and it's like there's always a barrier there trying to drive down the street. Well, and I'm quite sure that the court will tell you that uh, when the chief police drives through there. He stops everybody that's standing on the street. Is that right? Yeah. Well, one day I, I stopped because a, a guy was coming by in the other direction and a guy was talking to, he just stood out in the street talked to a guy in the car and he was really getting upset at me. I finally, I beat my horn at him and he felt like, hey, I'm not moving, like I'm, you know, I'm entitled to be here. So I was kind of upset myself with the guy. I was going to go down and sign a complaint against him. He was in class I should have. what he said did. Well, you should call us. Call us and you don't have to give your name right now. You just right. call us and well, say it's a green call call our name. And, a, and then we come down there and hopefully, this, I mean, this, as some way touched on our own, it's one square mile. We could happen to be right around the corner and we might be lucky enough to pull up there and we see it and we get a call. We're going to write them the ticket. I mean, we will issue some of the blocking the traffic. It's, it's, it's a nuisance. Yeah, that would be appreciated. Yeah, and it, it gets annoying. It doesn't. They don't do it with the police car, obviously. But when I'm off duty on a personal bid, people do it. Then I get a little closer and they see me and they go, that's the police. And they go, but it happens and it's a pain. And we'll work on it. Just call us, please. We'll get out there. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address Mary Council this evening? I got one more thing. Brian, you have a couple more minutes. If you can, at your privilege. <laughs> 
see it very lean. We're not seeing that strict. If you all the questions are coming great, hey, it's an edge, edge, it's an edge, it's a learning process. Big, big, Brian. I have one thing to say, Mayor. You know, I think a big problem in this town that's happened over the years is apathy. And I think what we need to start addressing, and maybe like just all of us in this room start thinking about it, is how we get people to start caring again. Yeah. I think if we did that, that that would help us tremendously. It's just a matter of just taking a little pride, caring, you know, find maybe the little things. Like I found that little you know thing down at the bar. Yeah, a couple bucks fixes that, you know. But like I think it's a matter of getting people, you know focused on improving things and caring again. I, I really think, and then once that happens, I think we're going to go places here. You know? Good point. Good point. Very good point. Let's all think about it, you know? I think, that, I think the, the world situation hasn't helped us much in that area. Everything that's going on in the world and the country, it's, it's, we're one little small square town, and what we watch TV, we, uh, and but it's, it's a great thing that that would happen. If everybody, and a lot of people do care. I, I, I will say that. I would say the majority of people in Pennsylvania would care. So, but we need we need more people to care. I totally agree with that. Okay. I'll be as quick as I can. I know you guys want to get out of there, but there was a couple of these houses, uh, buildings. Some of them that are more uh, dangerous or more at risk. The ones that are actually falling down, like the ones uh, out by the pier here. I don't know what you guys call these buildings, but you got the one that's right, literally right next to the pier there, where the roof is coming down. And there's stuff growing in there. Um, I just one, the old driftwood? Yeah, I think that is it, the old driftwood. Yeah. Um, there's power still going to that property. At the, point of, the, the point of attachment is still hot. You can look at it, follow the lateral, and see it's still going to the transformer. That's still hot. Well, that's only the front of the property. That's safe and secure. The back part, that needs a lot of work that doesn't have a roof the power is disconnected I, I don't know which part is which part but when you when you come down that main street headed towards the river and you make a right that little portion on the left side there's that that meter's hot and if you go 10 feet away there's roofs falling down you know what i mean it's it's kind of sketchy that's not the only property um mm -hmm. the one that we're having now roofs falling down not that we're having is that yeah, that's all going around yeah, it's talking about. Yeah. 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 It's on the river. It's right on the river. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no river. The, the bar that's boarded up has power going to it, but it was certified by the uh, electrical inspector, and it was rewired, and that's safe. Now the structure on the second floor and the rear part that collapsed is disconnected. There were two separate power sources feeding that location. One is disconnected, one is safe. Okay, um, the next two doors down from that, not the small one in the middle, but the, the most no notable one there, I don't know what you call that building, the one that's falling down with the, on the corner there. Um, the power on that is the POA, it's still hot. It goes down to a meter pan. Which one is it? That's the leak building? Is that, is that what that's called, the leak building? Yeah. The mm -hmm. one on the corner of uh, Penn and Main Street, I guess? Yes, yeah, the leak building. Okay. If you look in the corner there between those two, there's where no power start? in the building. Maybe there's, two in the building. There's power at the POA, and it's hanging down. The, the there's power attachment up there is hot. You can, you can follow the lateral over to the transformer. Well, well look, I'm looking at And, that's, and it. that's hanging down in the weeds. And there's there's a couple properties that I noticed, and I don't know addresses the one. The power line is loose, but it's not this kind of the, the SCU is hanging down. The yes. SCU is hanging down, the meter's not secured, and it's 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 powered to the meter. There's a lot of a lot of debris. If there's an issue, we'll address it. Uh, the other issue was I uh, heard that Chief's heart broke down during a break. Yeah, and I was riding with him. And you were riding with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, from what I understand, that car's pretty old. And we're 2000, paying, 2001. And we're paying quite a bit of money to maintain it? No, it's not true. It'll be this. Okay. Um, First of all, it's a disgrace where TV police had to ride around a 2001 vehicle. I agree. Yeah, and not a chief in this county has a car like that. All our chiefs have new car. Mm -hmm. So if he can have to ride that car, they, they can break down all day long with me in it. Yeah. If it has to, but because he saved us money on a new car. 
And that but it's, you know, that's, there's a safety issue there. What happens if he needs to get to one of his offices and need help? That's not, that's very not a safety issue. Yes, yeah. Corporal Schwartz would be ready standing by to pick him up and rush him to where he got to go. Murray Moss could pick him up. So. You're right, I guess he could run there, right? You're right. Uh, uh, thanks for your time. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this week, though. Thanks for the extra few minutes. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, audience. Got time for one more. Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to clarify that. What's your name, please? Luke <laughs> Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> that's. There's a few properties that we haven't been able to uh, get repaired because the banks declared bankruptcy and the court honors that with a stay of any actions for three years. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Just the leaders on Penn Street. And that's, that's one of the problems that we face. It's not that we don't want to do anything. We can't get the bankruptcy uh, finance company into court. Well, that's I don't you can do any other work in 16 hours. That's so, so a big problem. Why they bring that state? So, it's a problem. Okay, everybody's in closing public session. So, move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, so we're closing, Gary. Motion's adjourned. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. I think I need to pass it over to council okay. members. I'll give you just a quick story we'll, we'll talk about in August. Um, we have what's known as um, Mayor Council. Job initiative. That's what it's going to be talking about. And we'll have more information on this in our time tonight. Um, we've been a part of a collaboration and that's been between Mid-Atlantic Career Center in Pennsville, um, the Pastoral Sites Foundation, uh, City of Salem, Ministeriums of Pennsville, and Ministeriums of Salem, Community transit and the mission we set out was to it's been going on for some time. I've been part of the collaboration for with the Pascal sites for several years now. What we finally come up with now is is a, a job initiative, which there's a lot of jobs available. And under the Mid Atlantic Career Center of Pennsville, we are soliciting. It's going to be a fence root effort, of course. We're soliciting people to go to work. Um, we're going to be reaching out to the community and advising the community that there are jobs available. Now, they're not the Wall Street, New York type jobs, but they're jobs. If somebody wants to work, we're going to offer them an opportunity to go to work. Um, and I've already tested the wars, two people from Pennsylvania who I sent down to the Spear Center and both of them were, were, were hired. Um, and the other part about this is we not only find a job, but we give you transportation to take you there. And what this is, is this is bus schedules that deal with pure lands. We just added to host, that's the, that's the, that's the uh, turnpike. And we also have transportation that takes you to Bridgeton, uh, even as far as um, uh, the, on the other side of Bristol um, and uh, Millville, so we I think it's Millville. So we have all these all these uh, bus routes that we we're putting together to take people to work. Um, right now we have a lot of people that take people to work, but they pay twenty dollars a day to go back and forth to work, or somebody carries them. These suggested fares are two dollars each way. And uh, these are bus these are these are bus schedules which we hope to be able to put in everybody's house, um, and also and information of how if you need a job or one of your family members or somebody that you know needs a job that they have a place to go where they can find have somebody help find them a job. Uh, Cedarville, I suppose. See on the Cedarville. That's where on the other side of the person. So these bus routes are effective. They're in place now, as we speak. Um, so, and people in Pennsylvania really do not seem to know about this, this endeavor. So with the permission of council, I want to, we want to, I want to uh, have the permission to put this information out to this community about the initiatives on finding jobs 
and how the and, and present these bus routes that the, the, that will take them to those jobs. If that's okay for council. I'd we'll like to put the whole brochure together and, and get it approved in the August meeting. So that's something we want to work on because have we put this out? Ain't, there's nobody need to come and say, "Well, I don't have a job," because we're going to help find people jobs in this city. And there's a lot, there's a lot of jobs available. We just found out that the company called Five Below Zero is going to be hiring a lot of people, and that's close. But they have not given us a green light yet to start hiring people or establish a bus right bus route to Five Below Zero. So these are some of the things we're working on. Uh, since this, this propensity is going to be a mayor council initiation, initiative, initiation, initiative uh, for people who don't have jobs. So, but uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best on that. Any other business come from the council? Man? We'll talk to you about this in August. So, that's your motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All favor? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. We went over three minutes, a whole lot to make, but it was a great discussion. Great discussion. Thank you so very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.